The authorities of Russia's Kursk region say they will establish a special volunteer unit to maintain law and order in territories that border the areas currently under the control of Ukraine's armed forces, regional governor Alexei Smirnov announced. The unit will be called Bars Kursk. The main function of the unit is to ensure security in eight evacuated districts, as well as in other areas of the Kursk region, he wrote on his Telegram channel. He noted that volunteers who sign a contract will undergo training and receive weapons. The contract will be for six months, with their current employment and work schedule preserved. The unit's tasks are not limited to ensuring security, but also include participating in the life support of evacuated areas to help those who remain during this difficult period, Smirnov added. He also said that all actions of the Kursk region volunteers will be coordinated with the army and the so-called counter-terrorist operation headquarters. On August the 6th, Ukraine launched an offensive into Russia's less fortified Kursk region, surprising Moscow and forcing Russian conscripts into battle to try to contain Kyiv's progress. The Kremlin responded by declaring a counter-terrorist operation in the Kursk, Belgorod and Bryansk regions. However, Ukrainian forces have continued their offensive, which shows no signs of slowing down. Since March the 22nd, when the large-scale invasion took place, volunteers have been able to join BARS units for short-term service. BARS units are predominantly light infantry formations which lack integrated artillery or armoured vehicles, British military intelligence added. Without organic artillery and mechanised assets, these BARS units are essentially light infantry. Thus far in the conflict, Russian military leadership has used such light infantry formations as cannon fodder to attrite Ukrainian resources with little regard for the survival of its own troops. Today, there are over 30 BARS units spread across Russia, with a good chunk of them in the western part of the country. The creation of the BARS Kursk Volunteer Unit is almost certainly a Russian response to the Ukrainian incursion into the Russian Kursk Oblast, which began on the 6th of August 2024, British military intelligence stated. It is unlikely that the volunteer unit will be set up and able to support any Russian military activity in Kursk over the next month. Ukrainian military in the Kursk region closed the cauldron, in which about 3,000 Russian soldiers found themselves, writes Bild. Several days ago, the Ukrainian armed forces managed to occupy the village of Krasnoktyabrskoy, as a result of which the eastern border of the cauldron, which is blocked from the west by the state border, and from the north by the Syme River, was completely closed, notes Bild military observer Julian Repke, citing satellite data. According to the publication sources familiar with the situation, the area of the cauldron could be about 700 square kilometers. We are talking about an area of 20 by 35 kilometers, which was cut off from full supplies after the Ukrainian armed forces blew up three bridges over the Syme River with strikes from HIMARS systems and with the help of aviation, on August 16, 18 and 19. The bulk of the encircled Russian military is in the villages of Tyatkino and Glushkovo, a thousand in each, and another thousand are along the border, a build source indicated earlier. The cauldron was closed even though the Russian military managed to drive the Ukrainian armed forces out of the village of Koronivo, which had been under Kiev's control since August 20, along with the railway station of the same name, Repke notes. To supply the group that was under threat of encirclement, the Russian armed forces are building pontoon bridges across the Syme, which, however, are being attacked by the Ukrainian armed forces. On August 19, the crossing between the villages of Zvanoy and Glushkovo was destroyed. On August 27, the Russian military built another crossing in Zvanoy, it is located approximately 2 kilometers from the destroyed bridge across the Syme, Radio Liberty notes with reference to satellite images. At least two pontoon bridges had previously been attacked by the Ukrainian armed forces. For a full-fledged defense of the Kursk region and the return of lost territories, the Russian Defense Ministry needs about 50,000 soldiers, military analyst Yen Matveyev previously estimated. But the Kremlin has no plans to redeploy forces from the front in Donbass, where the Russian army has broken through Ukrainian defenses and, according to Deep State, has managed to seize 200 square kilometers of territory since the beginning of August, for times more than a month earlier.
Conscripts will be sent to the Kursk region, Bloomberg sources close to the Kremlin previously reported. According to Meduza's sources close to the Russian government, the fighting near Kursk will continue for several months, and this is an optimistic assessment. Putin is focused on ensuring the collapse of the Ukrainian state, after which, in his view, the issues of the territories under Kiev's control will automatically become irrelevant, says Tatyana Stanovea, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Russia Eurasia Center. While this is undoubtedly a blow to the Kremlin's reputation, it is unlikely to cause a significant increase in social or political discontent among the population, Stanovea says. A Ukrainian attack could actually lead to an increase in anti-Ukrainian and anti-Western sentiment.